now delighted to introduce your 2018 commencement speaker. Jeff Witches, a prominent Hollywood talent agent, graduated, uh, graduate of the class of 1979 and a member of the Western State Hall of Fame, has had a remarkable career of which we are extremely proud. An accomplished college athlete, Jeff Witches came to Western State in 1975 from New Jersey, where he had been working as a tennis professional. While he attended law school at night, he went to work in the mail room at the William Morris Agency in Los Angeles, eventually climbing his way up the ladder to vice president, serving as a talent agent for a diverse array of sports and entertainment clients. After 25 years at the William Morris Agency, Mr. Witches moved to the Agency of the Performing Arts in Beverly Hills as a senior vice president in the talent department, representing many prominent clients, some of whom he may tell you a little bit about in his remarks. Highly regarded in the entertainment industry, Mr. Witches was the first recipient in 2015 of the Talent Manager Association's Lifetime Achievement Award for Excellence as a Talent Agent. In recognition of his many achievements, Jeff Witches was inducted into the Western State College of Law Hall of Fame in 2014. As someone who has used his law degree and the legal acumen he acquired here to enhance a career in an exciting and rewarding field, Jeff Witches serves as a great role model for graduates contemplating the wide array of options available for their future careers. Ladies and gentlemen, I present your 2018 commencement speaker, Mr. Jeff Witches. Dean Easley, Dean Susan Keller, board members Richard Millar and Bill Shapiro, faculty and staff of Western State, graduating students, and by the way, we did check the grades right before today. <laughs> Everybody's okay. <laughs> but there were a couple, I don't know. No. Kidding. Friends and family, what a great and exciting day it is today. I have been looking forward to this for months. The royal wedding. <laughs> In fact, I think they're married now. All right, let's get serious now. I know I look young, but, but when I was representing Abraham Lincoln, I called him Abe, we, were, we did have a good relationship. I got him an offer, it was for the History Channel, and Abe passed. Principal photography was to start on or about April 14th, 1865. I urged Abe not to see our American cousin at the Ford Theater. I told him the play got poor reviews, and Washington, D.C. was not a theater town. He would not listen. So the lesson to all this is that clients should listen to their attorney and their agent. We know what's best. <clears throat> After college, I did not know what I wanted to do. I went back to my hometown, New Rochelle, New York, and I got a job as a teaching tennis professional running an indoor club in New Jersey. I did that for four years, but realized I wanted to do more with my life. I decided to apply to law schools, one being Western State. At that time, my motivation was Robert Kennedy. While teaching 
a student, that student happened to be an attorney. And I mentioned to him that I planned to go to California to law school, at least I hoped I, I would, and one of the schools I applied to was Western State. He started laughing for a couple minutes. So my first thought is, uh-oh, what did I do? But the truth is, after he regained his composure, he told me that his cousin was the dean of this school. It was Dean Boas. So I said, really? So I said, what are the odds of something like that happening? Now you can, come, you can come to your own conclusions. But I am sure it did not hurt <laughs> me getting into Western State. And I was so thrilled when I was accepted. I truly was. So while attending my first year at Western State, I was going by day, I remained active in tennis. And a chance encounter with my doubles partner, he happened to say to me, do you want to work for the William Morris Agency? Now, I never really thought about talent agent. I wanted to be a lawyer, you know, a practicing lawyer. William Morris Agency was a top agency in the business at that time. So even though I wasn't thinking about a career as a talent agent, <clears throat> it seemed like an opportunity worth exploring. I had learned in life that it's important to take advantage of the opportunities presented in life. So I switched to night classes and worked at William Morris by day. In 1979, I graduated from Western State, and William Morris promoted me to a talent agent. Western State gave me a terrific foundation to pursue an alternative career to the practice of law. And forever grateful. Over my 41 years already, which seems to be amazing, I have represented some terrific clients. And I, I thought I'd just mention a few and see if you know any of the names. Um, one of my first clients was that Gary Shanling, Bill Maher, all right, Jerry Lewis, Kobe Bryant. That was fun. That was fun. Del Harris, who coached the Lakers at the same time. Michael Cooper. Marvin Hagler, the fighter. Ray Boom Boom Mancini. For those old enough, Bob Hope. I actually did a Diet Coke commercial uh, deal for him. Fascinating, fascinating memory. If anybody follows the UFC in here, Holly Holm, which was, that was a treat. Mark Harmon, and I can go on and on. Today, I represent Betty White, who, she's great, Jason Momoa, I say the same thing. <laughs> For those who watch a show called Chicago PD, Jason Begay, John Seda, and Leroy Hawkins, the three leads of the show. If those, I don't know if any, anyone saw the movie Rampage, I actually represented the gorilla. <laughs> George the gorilla. My client is Jason Lyles. He did the motion capture work, which is fascinating to see. Elliot Gould, L Lewis Black, David Ramsey, for those who watch Arrow on TV. For those who are into wrestling, Big Show. Big Show is seven feet, about 400 pounds, all muscle. And I can go on and on with the clients, but that's just a taste, and it's a lot of fun. As a talent agent, I made this job my own, and I always go above and beyond. It's a major part of my life. Just very briefly, what a talent, agent's, talent agent does 
to seek employment and create opportunities for creative talent in all areas of show business throughout the world through personal service. I analyze situations, the career, and recommend strategy. I remember in law school there was IRAC. Still have that? Still? Okay. Kind of the same idea. I implement a game plan for success and longevity of career. I negotiate deals. That's my contractual law background. So I'm a trusted advisor to many clients. Ask not what your clients can do for you, but ask what you can do for your clients. It is about supporting and protecting your clients. The knowledge of the law truly helped me properly service my clients at a very high level. Now I thought I'd put together, maybe it'll help or shed some light on a journey that you're all going to take. The top 25 reasons why I have longevity of 41 years in the business. Okay, number 25. <laughs> I'll go fast, don't worry. don't worry. Just work hard. Work harder and smarter than anybody else. You will never get better unless you put in the time. I sleep about five, six hours a night. Never tell anyone that's not my job. Figure out how to do it. Number 23, reading people, body language is very important. It's not how you enter a room that's key, but more importantly, how you leave it. And if you watch people closely, if you told a joke or you were talking about something, their smile may quickly turn into another look. You get an insight into what they're thinking. Number 22, follow up and follow through. Be persistent. Complete the job thoroughly. 21, I try always to do the right thing. Make smart decisions. Number 20, I love teamwork. I don't like being a lone ranger. Collaboration brings out the best work and I work with some of the best attorneys in the business. They're entertainment attorneys. I can be tough, number, number 19, I can be tough and very competitive, but deal with integrity and heart. I always try to understand the other's point of view. Number 18, have a positive attitude. Negative attitude cancels out all positive skills. A number of years ago, I had cancer. I never missed a day of work. 42 straight days of radiation treatment. I did not want to give in. Number 17, give back. No matter where you go, never forget. We have a skill. No one can ever take it away from us. Number 16, a fierce loyalty I have to my clients. I'll go through the wall for them. I never give up. The word no does not exist. 15, focus on the big picture of the client's career. Guide them to the right projects. Number four, take chances. Trust your instinct and gut. And this is where I, I just bring up an example of Jason Momoa. Jason walked into my office 15 years ago, relatively unknown. It was a recommendation to meet me. For those who may not know Jason, he's 6'5", very powerful look, and he had long dreads at that time. So the first question he asked me was, what do you think of my hair? So <laughs> I wasn't sure if he was coming on to me <laughs> or he, you know, but the point of his question was everybody in the business was telling him if you don't cut your hair, you're not going to work in the business. So I said, what? You look fine to me. I mean, what are you going to tell a 6'5 guy like that? <laughs> um, but he had that it quality. He, was, he has incredible energy. He's funny. He's very smart, very loyal.
and he surrounds himself, which is important, with good friends. There's no one like him. He did Game of Thrones. His Aquaman is coming out in uh, December 21st. And we're working on a film now called The Crow, for some of you who remember that movie years ago. So he's going to play The Crow. The point of this is really you got to take risks sometimes, because at that time, honestly, he had really very few credits. Number 13, know when to keep your mouth shut. Number 12, failure is not a destination. Times get rough. You've got to fight the good battle. Do not go down for the count. All will pass. You will take control again. Number 11, I have never been a phony. I stay true to myself. Number 10, listen to clients' needs and desires. Then take action immediately. No matter how ridiculous it may sound, the client does not think so. You'll lose your client if you don't listen properly. For an example, if a, if a client is an actor and he says, I want to direct, well, if you just shove that off and say, oh, come on, you're never going to do that, one day you're going to lose the client because either another agent is going to say, I'm going to do this for you, or that client may direct something. So you must have a strong belief in your clients. Number nine, patience. Clients have their own timetable. Stay true to them through the ups and downs. Number eight, I really have a nine-year-old kid inside of me. I've never grown up. I never lost the enthusiasm and passion for what I do. Number seven, drink plenty of water. Take 30-minute walks daily. Clear your mind. Number six, your job won't take care of you when you're sick. Your good friends and family will. Keep them close. Don't ever be too busy for them. And especially, they will not be yes people to you. Number five, I do not fear speaking my mind. I stand up for my beliefs. And it's important to be your best when your best is needed. If I want to use a quick sports analogy, the NBA playoffs, players play a certain way during the season, and when the playoffs come, somehow they rise up. The great ones rise up, and they're winners. An example here about speaking my mind, I'll use Betty White. Betty White, who is 96 and still working, it's a good thing because my daughter's going to college. So I, I told Betty she's got to keep working. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I represented Betty for about 17 years. I love her. She's a great, great lady. If you remember her on Saturday Night Live, some of you remember her. That was back in 2010. Betty did not want to do Saturday Night Live. She did not want to go to New York. And I just said to her, no, you're going to do Saturday Night Live in a very nice way because it was the perfect time for her career. Years later, she, I mean, the same year, she won an Emmy for it. So sometimes you, you have to know your client and you've got to just push them to do something out of their comfort zone. She and I also went, Tina Fey received the Mark Twain Award in 2010. She and I went to the Capitol in New York. We had dinner at the Rotunda and there were many interesting people there. Our table consisted of Lorne Michaels from Saturday Night Live, the executive producer, who's a great man, Nancy Pelosi, and sitting next to me was Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, which was kind of a treat. I realized, I finally realized that the Supreme Court justices do have a sense of humor. <laughs> and she, she had a great one. She kept kidding me about about Betty White. She asked me, who was I there with? And I said, Betty, Betty White. She says, who's Betty White? <laughs> so I stopped for a second. I said to myself, I know they work hard, but you didn't watch the Golden Girls? No, Is that, was that a TV show? 
And I'm still knowing that she's pulling my leg. She's got to be pulling my leg. The dinner was about two hours. She never gave in that she knew who Betty White was. And her friend sitting next to me said, she was kidding with you. It's in her book. So what are you going to do? Betty and I went to the White House. Betty met President Obama, took a photo op. Went, we met with uh, President Clinton and Chelsea. Again, a lot of this came from me speaking my mind and, and Betty trusting me to do some of these things. Number four, enjoy the moment, like now. Just really enjoy it. Appreciate the good times when they occur. Number three, be able periodically to step back. Take a hard look at yourself. Ask, how can I be more efficient? What is it that needs adjusting? Number two, very important, this one. I am darn cute. I'm cute. Darn cute, you know, cute. Very important. Yeah, you, ha <laughs> you have to have confidence in yourself. And number one, you, have to, you must have a sense of humor. You must have it to get through life. You have to have it. There's just too much that goes on. People get nuts over things that you really don't have to. But you step back and just laugh at it because it is laughable. Don't take yourself too seriously. Now, go out there. Learn who you are. You can accomplish anything you set out to do. Rejections will happen, maybe for the best. You could have dodged the bullet. Be brave, be creative, be charismatic. That's star quality. Make a statement. If you need a little mnemonic device, BCCS. Brave, creative, charismatic statement. Life is good. I sat in your chair back in 1979. They weren't as strong as they are today. <laughs> but uh, I must say that Western State has given me, as I said before, a great foundation. I am proud to be a graduate of Western State. And good luck to all of you. I'm sure you're gonna do very well. Take care. At this time, we at Western State would like to honor Jeff Witches for his continuing achievements. So Mr. Witches, I'd ask you to um, come back up. And Dean Keller is the assistant. Oh, I'm over here. Right. Um, so, Mr. Witches, I um, want to present you with an emblem of our unique and enduring relationship. Jeff Witches, in recognition of your many accomplishments and with gratitude for the time you have shared with us today. We are honored to present you with this plaque to commemorate this occasion. Please accept our appreciation for your inspiring words and the role that you have played in this important.